I saw some rebellious people on the back row that didn't do that, but we'll pray for them. Amen. Let's stand up. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We've been having a good time in the presence of God and the Word of God. Encourage you, if you missed this morning or last night, to uh, get a copy of the CD and just let the Lord minister to you. And you know how the Lord is. He's just going to keep building on the foundation he's laid. The last couple of services, as Bob ministers tonight, as we uh, enter into his presence, he's got good things for us. Father, we give you praise. We thank you for who you are in our lives. We thank you, Lord. It's never dull. It's never boring to come and fellowship with you. When we open the door of our heart, you come in and you sit and you feast with us. You fellowship with us. You lead us into that place. You feed us the manna from heaven. And our lives are strengthened, our future is established, and our past is forgiven. We praise you, Father. We approach your throne with honor and praise. We're here to magnify you tonight. We're here to glorify your name. We're here, Lord, to see you be who you are in this earth. May heaven touch earth tonight. May heaven fill this room. May heaven fill Madera, California tonight. And may you be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship tonight. The angels are singing. I hear them singing this with us tonight. They're here in this building. The angels. <laughs> Exalt thee. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. The winds of healing are blowing in this place right now. Winds of healing. Physical healing. Emotional healing. The wind of healing is blowing right now. In Jesus' name. There's someone in here tonight, just keep playing and singing. There's someone in here tonight with a wrist problem on your right wrist. You're having issues with your right wrist. If that's you, just come up here right now real quick and stand right here. I just want to lay my hands on you real quick. Keep singing, keep ministering. The winds of healing are here <laughs> right now. Someone with their right wrist, just come up here right now. Anybody? I heard the Lord. I know I did. Is that you, sister? All right, just let me lay my hands on you. In Jesus' name, be healed right now. I command this wrist right now to be whole in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. My sister is able to do the work that she needs to do, pain-free because of the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Be healed in Jesus' name right now, and I thank you for it, and I thank you for provision in her life right now. Meet every need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We thank you for it. Let me 
get some of that. Father, hallelujah. <laughs> yes, I receive it too. Thank you for the fire of God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Yes. Yes, God. Yes. Outpouring. Outpouring of the fire. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Expect that. Wholeness in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Dad, Jesus' name. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord wants to heal ears in here tonight. Not only physically, but he wants to give us ears to hear in a greater way than we've ever heard before. Jesus would teach and he would say, those that have ears to hear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying. He wants to take us, and I'm not saying that we don't hear what the Spirit is saying at times, but he wants to take us into a place to where we're hearing the Spirit, more clarity, more understanding, greater revelation than we ever have before. But first, I want to pray for people who have physical problems with their ears. There's somebody in here, you've, been, you've had a chronic problem with your ears, and you've been asking God to heal. You've been standing for it. So if that's you, just raise your hand. Is that you? Anyone else? I, I feel like there's more than one person in here tonight. Yes. You can come up front if you want, or you can just stand right where you're at. doesn't matter. If you're here and you have any kind of problems with your ears, even if it's not chronic, just lift your hand. Uh, chronic, just lift your hands up right now. Now, one thing I've learned about the word of knowledge is the word of knowledge is God speaking to the spirit of a human, and when you release that word out of your spirit, out of your mouth, it's not you. It's God's creative, creative voice, His powerful voice coming forth. And if you'll receive that word, that's why the Bible says, if you believe the prophet, Amen. Then you'll have what the prophet says. You receive that creative word. Amen? And so right now, in Jesus' name, I speak to ears. I release the word of healing. I command chronic conditions to leave people's ears right now in the name of Jesus. Chronic spiritual conditions and chronic natural conditions. I command pain, discomfort to leave in the name of Jesus. I don't even know what this means, but I'm, I'm seeing inside some, somebody's ear, and it's like it's green in there. I don't know what that means. But it's like a green-type look thing inside. In Jesus' name, I command that to leave your ears right now. I command pain to go. I command life to flow in Jesus' name. Okay. Mike says, come on up here if you want hands laid on you for this, and let him lay hands on you. Yeah, it's okay. Go ahead. Praise God. Just line up if you want. Somebody help us with the pulpit there. Glory to God. As he's doing that, I want to release this too. This is kind of a different, strange one, different one. Just go right on over there and line up right over there, hon. This is a, a little different one. Heard a lot of talk about the swamp lately in the political arena. But God gave me the word swamp. I don't think it has to do with that. I think it has to do with something else. But if there's someone in here, the word swamp means something specific to you. I want you to come up here. I know it's weird. It's different. It's strange. But God knows how to point people out and get them up to a place where he can minister to them. If that means anything to you specifically. And if you're standing there or sitting there right now saying, well, I'm not sure if that's me, it probably is, or you wouldn't even be thinking that. You? Okay. Okay. She said that uh, the Lord equated the swamp to debt. Anybody else got a swamp instead of a river of blessing? Anybody in here need to be debt free? You know, we've got to get back into the supernatural realm if we're going to get anything done, folks. 
You can't principle your way through life. Thank God for principles, boundaries, wisdom to live by. But there's some of us, the fire of God needs to strike our life. And the angels of God need to come in, come flooding in. In the name of Jesus, I command instead of there to be a swamp of debt in your life, there to be a free flow of finances in your life, a river of finances, a constant flow of finances. You know, the Bible in, in uh, Ezekiel talks about the river of God, talks about how that some people get in at ankle deep, some get in at hip deep, some get so far in, they're over their head. That's where you need to get with God. So you need to get in over your head and get out of your head, get into your heart. Because when you get into that place, the river takes you where you need to go. You don't control the river and control your destiny. As long as you've got your feet on the bottom, you're, uh, you're going to be able to withstand the flow of the Holy Ghost, and that's not what God wants. But in that same chapter, it says that there's some places where the river's not flowing freely. And you know, the thing about swamps is there's snakes and alligators living in swamps. I don't want to live with the snakes and the alligators. I want to go with the river. I want the river to take me where I need to go. How many of you know what I'm talking about tonight? And so I command in the name of Jesus, not, over, not only over Tammy, over every person in here who will receive this word, a river of finances, a river, a flowing river of the Holy Ghost in whatever area they need it in Jesus' name. Yes, the angels are going forth to help those that will receive the word of the Lord. We thank you for it, Father, in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Amen. You want that? Well, take it. <laughs> Just take it. If you want it, take it. It's yours. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. We all got to get like the woman with the issue of blood. We got to be so, you know, focused on what God has for us that we'll bust through any place we have to to get it. Instead of sit back and look at it and look at it and say, "What meaneth this?" Any of you guys got anything? You got something? Are you sure? Yeah, you do. I thought you did. Keep getting this really strong in my spirit. In fact, I've had it now for since we've been here. Strange fire. Anybody ever heard the term strange fire before? And I feel like there's some people that need to be delivered. Really need to be delivered. They have a form of godliness. You know about God, but you're, you're dealing in, you're doing some things you know is not right. You know is opposite of the word, and you know, sometimes there again, you know, we hear about this word grace. Sometimes we, we take grace farther than what it's supposed to go. And I feel like the Lord is saying today that it's time that you get out of the strange fire and you get into the real fire of God. You get into that which is pure and holy, that which is able to purify, that which is able to set you free. Come on. Listen, man. Let's all be real. How many of you have ever been in, well, maybe you don't want to raise your hand to this, but I will tell you. How many of you ever been into some perversion that you wish you hadn't been? You know what I'm saying? And you needed the fire of God to set you free. Listen, I've been there, done that, bought the t-shirt, and I burned it. Thank you, Jesus. Stop keeping it in the closet. Burn the sucker. Get rid of it. And let the fire of God set you free. Because I'm telling you, I, I, I know without a shadow of doubt, there's some people here that's involved with some strange fire, and you need to get free. Because God will never be able to do with you what he wants to do until you do that. So... Amen. Somebody says, well, that's not a positive word. Yes, it is. Anything that will get you out of the devil's camp into God's camp is positive. Amen. You know how to get the fire of God? Ask him for it. And mean it. And mean it. Praise God. See, this is the Holy Ghost service, folks. We just want to listen to him, whatever he wants to do. Amen. He can do more in half a second than you and I can do in all of our struggles for 20 years. So I just open myself to him tonight. Anybody in here have something changed with your ears? Pain left or condition? What happened with you? Sinuses in your ears? 
Praise God. You feel him? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We testify of your healing power, Father, in the name of Jesus. Anybody else? Notice something change? Well, I'll tell you what's going to happen to some of you. You're going to hear the Holy Spirit better than you were hearing him. When you read the word in faith, believing, you're going to hear, because as you read the word, the author of the book that's in you interprets it to you. Don't you love it? The Holy Ghost reads you the word inside. He interprets it. And you're going to see things in there. It's going to be like a new book to some of you. Hopefully all of us. I take it for me too. You're going to see. You're going to understand. You're going to move. See, God's trying to move us up into something. He's trying to get us across Jordan into something. He's wanting us to understand we're already in the season. We just got to get with the program and follow him. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and praise him for a minute. Get your eyes back on him like you had him there a while ago. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Free flow. Free flow. No swamps. No, no, no. No swamps. Hallelujah. A free flow of the river of God. A free flow. See, you've got to get out in the river. Amen. Jesus was teaching out of Peter's boat. The people were on the bank listening to the teaching. They were, I'm sure they were, you know, warm from walking down there and the traveling. They probably got out about ankle or knee deep and splashed some water on themselves and sat back on the bank, cool and refreshed, listened to a good teaching, and then when it was over, they went home. But what they didn't know was they didn't get into the deep. Jesus looked at Peter and said, you want to do a little more than wait around in the shallows here? You want to go out where the miracles are at? You want to go out where your life will be changed and you'll never be the same? Are you willing to do something weird, Peter? Are you willing to do something that doesn't sound right to your human mind? He says, well, launch out in the deep. Go fishing at the wrong time. I know you fished all night. I know you just washed your nets. I know that you know, you're looking at me right now and saying, I'm the professional fisherman, you're the preacher, you stick to preaching, I'll do the fishing. But I'm telling you that if you will obey the word of the Lord and launch out in the deep and do something that doesn't seem right to you up here, but somehow in here there's a witness. That word deep is a very interesting word. One definition of it in the, Hebrew, in the Greek is profound mysteries. Mysteries to us, but profundity. It's, it's intricate wisdom of God. In 1 Corinthians 2, it says the Holy Spirit searches all things. Yea, the deep, it's the same word, the deep things of God. See, we can splash around in the shallows, be thankful for a good encouraging teaching, go home and be refreshed and say, oh, that was good. Or we can get out where God does miracles. And what I'm saying tonight, these words of wisdom, these words of knowledge, if you'll take hold of them, you're going to have something happen to you that happened to Peter. You're going to experience God. And things are going to change. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Lift your hands and thank him for it right now. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Any, anybody here got anything? Got anything? Praise God. Apostle Joyce, you got anything? Do you have something? The storm. What I saw and the Lord spoke and said that there's harmony in the storm. In that, you spoke about lightning, thunder, and all that go takes place in a storm. But in the spiritual realm, that is what is happening. God has come and brought the storm of interruption pervading upon us to bring about his will in our lives. It looks like a storm from a distance, but shifting and changing. There is harmony, and the harmony comes from the will of God, the presence of God. Hallelujah. So let's let him 
intrude upon us and bring his storm of change and shifting. Hallelujah. Let's let the storm of God rage in us, about us, around us. Holy Ghost storm. She's talking about what we shared last night. They were all in one place in one accord. And the wind of God blew. The fire of God came. The outpouring that Joel prophesied began to happen. Hallelujah. It was God. And he's going to give us that again if we'll open up to it. Amen. Praise God. Well, Karen, won't you come and share what's on your heart? Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, I heard a teaching this last week that has really blessed me. It was talking about God um, bringing a tuning fork to our life. And if you know anything about a tuning fork, when you're wanting to tune an instrument, you strike that tuning fork, which has the perfect pitch of whatever note that you're needing, and you bring your instrument in a line with that tuning fork. And God has, you know, we need to let God strike a tuning fork over our lives. You have one. Yes, you must. Oh, wow. Praise God. Then I'm not off. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. A tuning fork. God's wanting to bring his body. You were talking about the harmony, you know, when, when things come together. Uh, you know, uh, the Bible says that, that there's a, a clarion sound or there's a clear sound that's made in love. But when we don't operate in love, it's just a bunch of noise, he says. And so God's wanting to strike that his tuning fork, his, his, his divine measure. He wants to strike that over our life and cause things to come in line. You know, if you take that tuning fork and you strike it over sand, you know, and you hold it over that sand, it'll move that sand. It'll bring it, bring it into a position. And see, that's what God is wanting to do in our lives. He's wanting to strike his tuning fork over your life to bring you in line so that you are a clarion sound to the world. See, sound is a big word right now. Because God's wanting a sound that people can hear. Not, you know, what all this mumble jumble and, you know, Destiny and I were talking here while, it, just a while ago. And she was talking about, you know, her heat with, everybody was fellowshipping before church started. And she said she could just, she heard everybody. Everybody talking at once. And it, and it just sounds like confusion. But when God brings his body into tune into harmony with him, what he's saying, what he's doing, how he's moving, how, how his heart beats. When he brings us in line with that in our lives, then the world is going to hear a sound that they can't deny. They can't deny it. And I'm telling you what, God, let him strike that tuning fork. Let him, let him set the sound in your life. You know, the megahertz and the, you know, all of that. I, I bought, um, what was it, physics for dummies. <laughs> because I wanted to learn about sound waves. I wanted to learn about, about you know, the megahertz and, you know, all the things that are out there. And, and, they, and, and God's wanting to bring everything into harmony. The Bible says this in, in Romans, the 8th chapter, I believe it is, that, all of creation groans for the manifestations of the sons of God. Even nature itself is crying out, get it together! <laughs> because they want to be what God created them to be. He didn't make rain to have a flood. He didn't make lightning to strike and destroy. He didn't make winds to tear things up. That wasn't their assignment. And God is waiting. All creation is waiting for the sons of God to manifest and tell it. 
to line up to the will, the plan, the purpose of God, to be a blessing in this earth. Amen? Praise God. Well, that wasn't the offering. But I think it was God. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, it, uh, Brother Larry spoke about angels last night. You know, your angels get involved in your giving. Over in Judges, there was a man named Manoah. Anybody know who Manoah, who Manoah was? Samson's father. And the angel came to him and said, you're going to have a, came to his wife actually, and said, you're going to have a son. And she ran home and told her husband, told Manoah. And they came back. And when they came back, they came back with an offering, a sacrifice to worship the word they had just received. And the Bible says that when they made that sacrifice, that the angel went up in the smoke of that sacrifice, that offering. And it happened exactly the way God said it would happen. God gave them a deliverer. Now, of course, we know the deliverer was flawed, but he did his job eventually. But, you know, when, when, um, when the wise men came and brought their offering to Jesus when he was born, uh, we knew, well, later we know the, what Larry said last night. <laughs> When they brought their offering to, to Jesus, to Jesus' family, they didn't know that their offering was going to support Mary and Joseph as they fled to Egypt. What they gave them was a harvest to Mary and Joseph, but it was a seed to them. And their seed of giving, in that they worshipped God. And the Bible says... That that night, boy, it was quick, turn around. That night, an angel came to them and said, don't go back the way you came. Their offering saved their life. Their worship saved their life in God. And then Cornelius over in Acts, the 10th chapter. Cornelius, the angel came to him and said, Cornelius, your offerings, your alms, and your prayers have come before God as a memorial and as as he obeyed the voice of that angel and Peter came to them his whole family was one the first Gentile family one and born again and filled with the Holy Ghost and Peter says oh my goodness I perceive a good thing that all of this is just not for, I'm paraphrasing, of course, all of this is just not for the Jews, it's for the world. Angels get involved in your giving. And when you, when you give, it's, it's a sweet-smelling odor. When, when you just don't bucket plunk, but you give with worship, you give with praise, and it becomes a sweet-smelling odor that rises up to the throne of God. And I'm telling you what, your answers and your angels rise with your giving as you give it from worship. Never give an offering out of duty or obligation. Don't ever give your tithe out of duty and obligation. They said when you bring your tithe and your offering, Deuteronomy 26, when you bring your tithe and your offering to the house of God, you remove that holy thing from your house and you bring it into the house of God and you put it in the basket. Remember where you came from. Be thankful and be grateful where you were and where God's brought you. Offerings are always taken in worship. So as you prepare to give, have they already been out with the envelopes as you prepare to give cause your heart to worship let the worship for the goodness of God when I think about what he's done for me when I think about where he's brought me from he brought me from from a place that my neighbors were asking my husband if I was crazy he brought me from a place that I had to take volumes to survive during the day. I'm telling you, he's done more for you 
than you can even imagine. He's brought you so far. I heard Brian's testimony that God brought him from homelessness. Homelessness. Gave him, not only gave him a place to live, but a job. I know some of your stories. And I'm telling you, God's done great. Hannah's not even supposed to be sitting there. Four years ago, five years ago, was it a car accident when they found her, she wasn't even breathing. They got her breathing, but realized her neck was broke. Said she'd never probably talk, sing, walk, anything. I'm telling you, he's done great things for you. Let your worship go up to him tonight. Father, we thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for what you've done. Father, thank you for the gifts that you've brought us in these men and women. God, we worship you that from them, Father God, you speak. From them, you give us revelation, Father God. God, you've sent us good gifts. And God, we just worship you now and we praise you and we thank you for you're worthy. Yes, you are. You're worthy of our praise. You're worthy of our honor. You're worthy. And we give you praise and honor tonight as we give. We worship you with our giving. And Father, I thank you that as we give tonight, the angels are activated. The angels are released to do what they need to do to bring us in alignment to your assignment. And Father God, I thank you and I praise you that you are an awesome God. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name for, together. Oh, we worship you and we praise you and we thank you tonight. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Just a holiness and a reverence in this place tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We are a blessed people, aren't we? Amen. While they're receiving the offering, um, uh, Nathan has a, a CD out there on the on the table that he's selling, and, and this is his uh, uh, first CD. It's been out what about a year or two, about a year and a half. It's been out there ten dollars. There's um, how many songs on here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine songs on here. He's selling it for ten dollars. If you would like one, uh, pick one up. Uh, also the Second to last song that we sung tonight, um, if you remember that one, that's on his new album. He just re had a new album released uh, here about two weeks ago, I think it was, three weeks ago? About two weeks ago. And um, you can pick that one up on or, or buy that or listen to it as well on iTunes or on Spotify as well. If, so if you know what those are, then you're good. If you don't, Google it yourself and figure it out, all right? But... Uh, but yeah, his new album is on iTunes or Spotify, and you're welcome to be a part of that as well. So there's some out there. If you would like one, pick one up at the end, but make sure you pay for it first, okay? Amen. Uh, ten, uh, tomorrow morning at 9.30 a.m., uh, uh, Pastors Tony and Mary will be with us speaking tomorrow at 9.30 a.m., amen? And then uh, tomorrow night, uh, the wild man from Wisconsin, Pastor Tom Terry, will be with us tomorrow night speaking at 6 o'clock. And uh, so make sure you uh, come on back tomorrow if you can. Amen. Um, before I introduce uh, Pastor Bob, um, I just want to share a quick story about Pastor Bob. And um, no, it's a good one. And he, Pastor Bob and Sister Laura too as well, they both, they mean a lot to me and my life and my family. And um, back in March of 2008, um, I was going through leukemia back in March of 2008. And uh, some of you know that, some of you don't. But um, we were over uh, after we had these meetings that we're having right now. We had them. And we went over to the coast uh, to fellowship for a few days. 
like we do after these meetings. And uh, Pastor Bob and Sister Laura weren't at the meetings that year, but they ended up meeting us over at the coast to be with us. And uh, Pastor Bob had no idea that I was going through uh, leukemia at the time. And I'd been going through it for about two months at the time. And um, he had no clue. I guess nobody had told him. I didn't, I didn't know that. But anyways, that night when they got there, we ended up getting together and hanging out and just kind of talking and fellowshipping. And uh, Pastor Bob had a word for me that night. And um, he spoke to me and he said, he said, when I looked at you earlier today when I got here to the hotel, I saw you playing catch with your sons out there with the baseball. And he said, when I looked at you from a, from a distance, as soon as I looked at you, he said, all of a sudden I saw these little white balls like coming out of your inside, your innermost being. And as soon as he said that, I knew what he was saying to me because the kind of leukemia I had, I had no immune system at all. So I had no white blood cells. White blood cells look like little white balls, you know. And as soon as she said that, I mean, my spirit just leaped on the inside. You can only imagine, right? You know, the word I heard from the Lord. And then we share with him, well, yeah, that's what I'm, I mean, I'm going through the chemo right now. And he was floored. He had no idea that I was even going through that right there. But he laid his hands on me. And when he laid his hands on me, I hit the floor like somebody shot me. I've only felt the power of God like that one other time, and that was at a Benny Hinn meeting <laughs> when he walked by me. And I flew in the air. It was, it was wild. But he laid his hands on me, and I hit the ground. And when I hit the ground, I mean, I hit the ground. And when I hit the ground, I was shaken, and I was baking, literally. I was bouncing on the ground. Just boom, 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 boom. And I was, and I, and, and I, was swe- I mean, I, my hands and my feet, feet were sweating. I, had, I, had, I didn't have any shoes or socks on. I had sandals on or whatever. And my feet and my hands were sweating. The fire of God was on me. They picked me up, and then, and, then, and then I got a double dose. Pastor Tom and Pastor Bob laid hands on me again. So that was double. I went down again. But I believe that night that they laid their hands on me. I was going to be healed anyways, no matter what. But I believe that night God used Pastor Bob to speak a word to me that sent me over the top. There was n- no doubt ever again after that that I was not going to receive the manifestation of the healing. And I believe that night was very critical for me and a, a, ver- a, a very epic moment for me and, and my healing that night. And, and, and Pastor Bob is, is, is everybody special to me, but he's, he has a special place in my heart because he heard the word of the Lord and he saw what the Lord showed him. And that encourages us to be like that. If the Lord shows us something about somebody, or we hear something, that the Lord releases us to do it, we share it with them. Because it'll change their life forever. And I believe that night was the night that that leukemia was blown out of my body. And I know it was. By the fire and the power of God. Because of someone's obedient word to me. Amen? So with that story, Pastor Bob... Please come. I love you so much. Let's welcome Pastor Bob. Amen. I love you, Pastor Bob. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> God arise. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, that was really an in- a really interesting uh, time because we had left uh, our home in, in southern Oregon. It's about seven, eight hours or something like that, you know. And all the way in that journey, I just pray in the Holy Ghost. I love to pray in the Holy Ghost. So I love to pray in the Holy Ghost. I was birthed in the fire of the Spirit, and I cannot live in the smoke of religious tradition. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. And I had no idea of any of that situation going on there. And I'm being honest to tell you, it was not me. It was the Spirit of God because He's had His hand and His destiny on you, Mike. And you've got, God's got great, great things in store for you and through you to accomplish through your life. Hallelujah. I know that. I know that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I'm here to tell you tonight, friends, that God's got great things in store for each and every one of you. God is no respecter of persons. I said he's no respecter of persons. If he was, I certainly wouldn't be here. 
I'm the least likely candidate. You know, while I, in, in school, the least likely to succeed. I'm, I'm the least likely candidate. But God is a God of great mercy and God of great love and a God of great compassion, God of great power. And he's interested in your life and the destiny that he has ordained for you. We are his children, praise God, his offspring. And he wants to bring us all the way into the full radiant splendor of his glory, his majesty, and his grace, praise God, so that the sons of God will be made manifest in the earth, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I've preached thousands of sermons over the years, and it was really interesting as uh, I was preparing for this particular time, I had nothing. <laughs> Many things that I could share, but I've always been in the heart and mind. I want the word of the Lord. I want God's spirit to move in me, to move through me. Well, last night, as I could not sleep, <laughs> the Lord began to speak to my heart. And he shared with me that he's doing a new thing in your life and in my life, in the body of Christ and I'm telling you, my friends, God is going to open some doorways, is opening doorways and chasms to move you and I out of positions and conditions, states of bondage, of, of being held back and being captivated so that every chain is broken off of our life, praise God, so that we're no longer living in oppression or depression or repression or suppression. But every chain is broken, praise God. Hallelujah. Every chain is broken. We can come out in liberty and freedom. He's called us out of darkness into His marvelous light. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, in Jeremiah 29, the children of Israel were in Babylon. And they were being held captive. You know, captivation is a state where you can't do what you would like to do, what you can't be, what you would, could possibly be. You're being restricted, you're being restrained, you're being held, you're being limited. And they were in Babylon. Babylon got its name from the Tower of Babel, which means confusion. And confusion is an interesting state. None of you have ever been there, but I've at least, I used to live there, vacation there. <laughs> Spent lots of time there. Confusion. Confusion is an admixture of two opposites so that you can no longer distinguish one from the other. And you know, when an individual is in a state of confusion, just like the, the children that had gone together, wanted to build a city, a tower, and a name, when, they, when confusion entered in, they left off building, and they were scattered. And I'll tell you, that's exactly what happens when we live in, in confusion. We can no longer go forward. We can no longer progress. We can no longer advance. But I'm telling you, friends, we're at an hour and a time where God is uh, bringing of clarity of heart, clarity of vision, clarity of purpose into the lives and hearts of anyone and everyone that will receive it. Because he's got destiny for us. How many of you believe he's got destiny for you? Hallelujah. He's got destiny for us. So the Lord said, after 70 years are accomplished in Babylon, I'm going to visit you. And I'm going to perform my good word towards you in causing you, in causing you to return to this place. For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you, to promote you, propel you, to move you onward, to move you forward to the destiny and the purpose that I've purposed for your life. I know the plans that I have for you. Hallelujah. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a future and a hope. Amen. How many of you know the future is something that's different than the state you've been in? Amen. The condition you've been in. God wants to give us a future and a hope, an expectation and anticipation of good things. And he went on to say, you shall seek me and you shall find me when you search for me with all of your heart. Amen. And I will be found of you, says the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity. I'll break every chain off of your life, praise God. I'll break every snare, the things that have held you back and limited you and restricted you and restrained you. I'll break every chain off of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You ready to come out into the new space, a new place that God has for you? 
Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you tonight, this is the hour. This is the time. You said, no, no, it's further way out in the future. No, it's right now, praise God. I don't know about you, praise God, but I've got destiny in God. God's got destiny in your life and in my life, and he's got plans and purposes for us and through us for this world that we're living in. I'm going to tell you something. You know, as I, as I walk through the marketplace and, and in different spaces and places, I see this uh, atmosphere in the hearts and lives of people. And they need to have the divine glory and power of God presented to them to bring them out of that darkness, to, sh- to break that, that veil off of their mind and off of their heart and to bring liberty and freedom and clarity. You know, I lived for 27 years, and I, I was a, an ex-drug addict. I started drinking when I was about 11 years old, and by the time I graduated from high school, I was a full-blown alcoholic. I'm not kidding. I was. I, I'd have booze in my car during the, and, and, and you know, and, and uh, different things. I'd zip out to my car. I know none of you would ever compliment, uh, you know, c- contemplate anything like that, or do anything like that, or be in those kinds of conditions. But I was. And it went from, from that position to a place where I literally despaired of life itself. Got heavily involved in drugs. And I was in a bad state and a bad plate. But you know what? I cried out to God. You know where I was? I was locked up in a padded cell in a psychiatric unit. He said, what? A friend of mine's mom worked up there, and, and, he, and he told her later, I'm going to this guy's church. He said, What? <laughs> But how many of you know God can transform us and change us and bring us in to different conditions and different places and different spaces? Because God is a great God and a mighty God, and he's got destiny and plans for your life and for my life. And the Lord wants to do some new things in your life, praise God. You know, the scripture tells us in Isaiah chapter 43, the Lord says, Thus saith the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake, for your sake, I have sent to Babylon, and I brought down all their nobles and the Chaldeans whose cries in the ship. I did this for you. I did this for you because I'm interested in you. I'm interested in your welfare. I'm interested in uh, in, in your breakthrough and the destiny that I've destined for you. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, which bringeth forth the chariot and the horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They are extinct. They are quenched as a tow. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. For behold, I will do a new thing. I will do a new thing. I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and streams in the desert, praise God. Hallelujah. And in this passage of Scripture, I want you to recognize something. God is speaking to His chosen people. He said, I am the Lord your God. I'm your Redeemer. Yes, yes He is. How many of you know He, he, he is not, He's yes, redeemed he us from the hand of the enemy. Yes, he's he redeemed us. He's called us out of darkness into His marvelous light. Yes. And He's got purpose for us. He's got destiny for us. You say, what is this destiny? He wants us to be conformed to His image, possessor and possessing all of His divine attributes, yes. all of His character. He's called us to His kingdom and to His glory. Hallelujah. And so he says that I, 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 will, make, I'll, I will bring down every enemy, every opposition, every force that's, that has sustained you or restrained you because I've got purpose for your life. And I will do a new thing. I make a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters. I'll make a way in the wilderness and streams in the desert. So in that light, the Lord said, do not remember the former things, neither consider the things of old. Hallelujah. I will do a new thing. Now, it's interesting for us to acknowledge this truth in this moment and this hour in which we're living, that the new thing that God said he's going to do pertains to a way, a way, a way 
a, a pathway, a journey from where you have been to where he wants you to be. It has to do with making a way to bring you out of where you were into what he has ordained for you, praise God. Hallelujah. So in that light, the Lord said, I will make a way. And I'm going to tell you something about the way that God makes. It's not your way, and it's not my way. It usually isn't the way that we would choose, right? It's not the way of our engineering. I know the way of my engineering. <laughs> it's not the way of our engineering. Sometimes we have all of these plans and purposes, how we're going to do this and how we're going to do that. And I've discovered something. All of our ways are ways of death, but God's way is a way of victory. It's a way of life. It's a way of liberty. Are you ready to step in to what God is opening up for you? Are you ready? How many of you are ready to come into a new position and a new condition in your life? To see those things that have held you in times gone by. You know, there's a lot of God's people that are living in oppression and depression, phobias and fears. God wants us to come into a place, praise God, where we're triumphing in him we're radiant in his majesty and his glory so the lord said he's going to make a way for us a make a way where there seems to be no way and in that light he said don't remember the former the former things or consider the things of old you know i've discovered in my life one of the greatest things that will hinder you from advancement is to keep on keeping on in the way that you have been, in the way that you've been doing things, in the way that you've been thinking, in the way in your attitudes that'll hold you and mold you into that place. And you know, sometimes even in this Christian, it may seem like everything, all the church is flourishing and so on and so forth. I'm going to tell you something. God's got greater things than any of us have ever considered before. Greater things, awesome things. So he said, remember you not the former things, neither consider th the things of old, because I'm going to do, I will do a new thing. Shall you not know it? Shall you not know it? Now, you know, we need to be able to perceive the new things of God. I remember reading for years and years about individuals that had been in certain revivals, and they got so set in that revival that they couldn't embrace the new. And, you know, Pastor John was alluding to that passage of Scripture where the Lord spoke to Peter. and He said, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. And about two years ago, just as we were coming down here, the Lord brought that particular passage of Scripture that, and that incident into my life. And he said, son, you can't keep acting and, and thinking and speaking and doing as you've always done and expect to move forward in me. Yes. Hallelujah. I will do a new thing, shall you not know it, praise God. God will make a way in your life. Amen. He'll make a way in your life. And, I, and once again, I want you to recognize something, that the way of God has to do with you moving through barriers and restrictions and restraints and bondages and things that have held you in times gone by so that you are able to overcome and triumph. Amen. You know, sometimes people are so set in situations and circumstances that instead of overcoming those adversities and those circumstances, uh, they just stay in that position. They stay in that enslavement, in that bondage. Like the children of Israel, 400 years in the land of bondage. Yeah, and they liked it. They got real used to it. And you know, you can get real used to living in bondage and in slavery and, 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 and in poverty and lack and insufficiency and folly. But praise God, God's got better things in store for you. God's got greater things in store for you. And He can bring you out, praise God, and He will bring you out if you'll embrace what He's doing in this hour. And not only can He, but it's critical for you and I, because I'm going to tell you something, we are on a pathway of destiny. A pathway of progression. Yep. Hallelujah. How many of you know that we're moving towards divine perfection? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. And so we don't, we don't want to stay in the same positions and the same conditions and the same state of being. I don't know about you, but I want to go on and go up, praise God. I want to grow up in Him. And one of the things that really began to trouble me after a number of years in the body of Christ, I saw a lot of individuals that weren't growing. 
None of which are here tonight. I'm speaking about folks in a distant galaxy, far beyond the reaches of, you know, light years away. Folks that aren't growing. Hallelujah. But the Lord is wanting to grow us to grow up. He gave the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher for the maturing of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, the building up of the body, till we all come into the oneness of the faith, the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I thank God for what He has done, but I'm going on. I said, I'm going on, and I'm going up, and you're coming with me, praise God. I said, you're coming with me, glory to God. We're going together. We're moving together. We're flowing together. Hallelujah. Now, once again, I brought out this truth that these, this new thing that God's doing pertains to making a way through the mighty waters, through the great sea, through the swollen river Jordan, through the barriers and restrictions uh, that, that, uh, that present themselves in our lives to make a way where there seems to be no way. You know, it's really interesting in, in my life as I've observed the, the way that the Lord works, oftentimes it seems, seems like there's no way. <laughs> you know, there, there, how many of you know what I'm talking about? There, 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 there's no way, but God makes a way where there seems to be no way. And if we'll get our eyes off of our own engineering, our own way, and begin to embrace the things of God and step into the things of God, we're going to see the barriers fall. We're going to see the walls come down. We're going to see the chasms open before us. And we're going to step in to that which God has ordained for our life. Hallelujah. So it involves overcoming opposition, walls, barriers, hindrances, restrictions, and restraints. And if that be true, then this also is true, that it's going to require that you and I believe God and trust Him. Because this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And if you can receive it and believe it, praise God, you can achieve it in God by His awesome power. He'll do things in your life, to your life, through your life that you could have never even deemed possible. Because our God is a God of supernatural ability, supernatural power. And He wants you and I, as Pastor John was alluding to you and I, He wants us to embrace the supernatural dimension of His Spirit, the supernatural dimension of His power. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes folks begin to get, oh, you know, that's too lofty. That's too, you know, it's all, you know that, that, that cannot happen. I'm going to tell you something. All things are possible to him that believes. All things are possible. You say, well, Pastor Bob, I've been in this situation, been in this condition for so long, 400 years. I've been in this condition and this state of being so long, it can't change. My financial situation, my physical situation, my marital situation, my job situation, my mental situation, I've been so long, but it, you know, it just can't change. All things are possible Amen. to him and or her that believes. Amen. You know, in Mark's Gospel, chapter 9, and Matthew, chapter 17, there's an incident recorded where Jesus, Peter, James, and John had been up in the Mount of Transfiguration. And when they came down, a certain man ran to Jesus and fell on his knees. And he said, Master, my son has a devil. He's sore vexed. And oft times he cast him into the fire and oft times into the water to destroy him. I brought him to your disciples. I brought him to your disciples that they should cast him out, but they couldn't do anything. They didn't have any ability to do anything. But if you can do anything, how do you believe he can do anything? If you can do anything, if you can bring about any change in my life, in my home, in my marriage, in my finance, if you can do anything, then have mercy on us and bring deliverance. And Jesus asked that man, he said, how long has this, has, has this been? How long has this, this situation been? And he says, since he was a child. You know, I just kind of muse on some of these things. And I think, could you imagine, I'm just thinking to myself, having a child that's being so tormented? Precious child. I love my children. I said, I love my children. I love my grandchildren. 
And you know what? I love you too. And I don't like to see anybody tormented. I don't like to see anybody in bondage. And neither does the Lord. Hallelujah. How long has this been? From since he was a child. In other words, he had been in that condition and that state for, for a long time, for, 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 for many years. We don't know exactly how many years. I don't know exactly how many years, but for a long time he had been in that situation. And, you know, it possibly that, that father and, their, and, and mother, they possibly wouldn't, weren't, weren't really uh, thinking that there could be, ever be any changes. It's always been like this since he was a child. I think about the woman with the issue of blood. 12 years. The Bible says for 12 years she, she, she suffered many things of many physicians and was nothing better but rather she grew worse. She spent everything she had. She was exhausted. She exhausted her resources. She exhausted her hope. She exhausted her energy. 12 years. Or how about the woman that was bowed over for 18 years? Scripture says she could no wise lift herself up. 18 years. When I was in the military, I was in the Navy. And, uh, you know, in boot camp, they, I, I often think, you know, they didn't have a lot to teach you except for discipline. And they were very good at that. And if you so much as had a speck of dust on the top of your locker, oh, that's it. You know, it's not the unpardonable sin, but it was very close. <laughs> And one of the things that they would do as a remedial exercise to remedy this situation is they would put one of these old M1 rifles filled with lead in an individual's hand and they'd have them bow over like this. And I watched these uh, young men begin to just break down and shake and quake because of the tremendous pressure that was brought upon them from being in that position. 18 years. Help me somebody. 18 years. No situation, no changes. The man that Peter and John ministered healing to, that young, that lame man at the gate called Beautiful, the scripture said he had never walked a day in his life from his mother's womb, and he was over the age of 40 years. And in these instances, there are numerous others, but in these instances, it looked like things were never going to change for them. But in one instant of time, in one moment of time, everything changed, praise God. And the, what they could not do before, they could do now. What they couldn't, they couldn't perceive or uh, achieve before, what now made possible in their life. And my friends, I'm here to tell you tonight, all things are possible to him and or her, her that believes. Are you ready to believe God for breakthrough in your life? I said, are you ready to believe God for a breakthrough in your life? To come out of positions and conditions. You said, but pastor, it's been so long. I've been in this state of being. I've been in this condition so long. I'm going to tell you something. If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. You know, sometimes we can get ourselves into a mindset where we just begin to buy into the lie. None of you know what I'm talking about. Begin to buy into the lie, talk the lie, walk the lie, think the lie. It's time. I said it's time to come up and to come out into the new things of God. He's going to change some things in your life. He's going to change some things in your life. He makes a way where there seems to be no way. Moner, I, I spoke with you this morning. I, I'm here to tell you tonight, he's making a way for you. He's changing some things from you. He's opening some chasms for you. It's not your engineering. It's not your making. But you need to step into it, and you need to step out in it, praise God, and walk in it. And as you do, as you step, as, as they stepped into the swollen waters of Jordan, as you step into that, into that pathway that the Lord's made for you, you're going to see everything open, praise God, and everything change. Amen. Hallelujah. What a great God we serve. What a great God we serve. Hallelujah. What a great God we serve. 
You see, my friends, you and I are the children of the Most High God, and we need to execute and exercise His divine authority and power in our life, and that is accomplished through faith, through believing in His Word, through, through embracing His supernatural power to do in us, to do through us what we could never do in our own lives. You know, that word that was brought forth, you spoke, and you spoke last night about the, about the storms and the winds of change. That's what came up in my spirit last night. Winds of change. Winds of change. He said, well, I've come a long way. Yeah, you've come a long way. But I'm going to tell you something. God's going to open some things in your life and in my life if you will embrace it. I said, if you embrace it. And one of the greatest hindrances to embracing the new things of God is being bound up in the old. You know, the Apostle Paul was talking in Philippians, and he was talking about, you know, that he wanted to know him and the power of his resurrection. He said, but I don't consider myself to have apprehended. I don't consider myself to have already attained everything. You know, a lot of folks in Christendom are just sitting on their, their porch swing, as it were, just rocking back and forth, waiting for the, you know, well, someday in the sweet by and by. I'm going to tell you, this is the someday right now in the sweet by and by. This is the day of our breakthrough. This is the day of coming up. This is a day of breaking every chain, praise God, and coming out of bondage, coming up higher in the things of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So Paul went on to say, this one thing I do, say it with me, this one thing. Turn to your neighbor and look right in the eye and just say this to them, this one thing. Come on, this one thing. Come on, be bold. Be bold. This one thing. This one thing. Well, come on. This one thing I do. Forgetting those things that are behind. And reaching forth unto those things that are before, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God that is in Christ Jesus. Thank God for all that He has done in times gone by. He's done some wonderful things in the, in the world, in your life, in my life, in the church, in revivals. But he's, we're living in a new time and a new hour, praise God. And God said He's doing a new thing, a making a way where there has seemed to be no way for you and I to come into the greater space, the greater place, the greater position, and the greater condition that he has for us. You know, Pastor Thomas, tell I've known this for a long time. God's hand is upon you in a special way. In a special way. And you know that. And the Lord's doing some new things, things that, things that have been, things that he's brought you to. He's going to just change, some, uh, some real, make some real changes, and you're going to find yourself stepping through, a, through a, as it were, a portal into another, whole other dimension of ministry and life. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I feel the Holy Ghost. 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 You know, once again on that day of Pentecost, everything, everything changed. I like the story of Samson. You know, they tried to bind him up. You know, the devil liked to bind you up, liked to restrict you, liked to restrain you, liked to hold you down. But the Holy Ghost would come upon him and every chain would be snapped off of his life. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. I want to ask you a question. Do these truths bear witness to any of your hearts? Do you need change? Do you need to see change? Do you want to see change? I'm going to tell you something. I've been walking with the Lord for over 40 years. I thank God for all that he has done. I've had some difficult situations and circumstances like you have. 
but I've discovered something. My Lord will break every chain, Amen. every bondage, every restriction, everything that has sought to hold us back if we will but trust Him, believe His Word, receive His Word, conceive His Word, and walk in the power of it. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm getting ready to pray for some of you here in just a moment. We are. So how can these things be? You remember the angel Gabriel had appeared to Mary and he said, Hail, thou who art highly favored. The Lord is with you. Amen. You know what? He's not only with us, he's in us. Amen. He's on the inside of the Lord is with you. Amen. Blessed are you among women. And she cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said, Fear not, Mary, because you found favor with God. And you're going to conceive in your womb. You're going to conceive in your womb. You're going to conceive in your womb. And you're going to bring forth a son. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said, how shall these things become a reality? Seeing my condition, my situation, my circumstances, never embraced anything like that. And the angel said, the Holy Ghost shall come up on you and the power of of the highest shall overshadow you and therefore that holy thing that shall be brought forth out of the midst of you shall be called the Son of God. Yes. And behold, Elizabeth, thy cousin, this is now the sixth month with her who was called barren, incapable of bringing forth. She'd been in a condition for a long time, never changed, no situations changing, been in that situation. She was called barren, but now she's conceived and she's going to bring forth a son. Something new is about ready to happen. Something new is about ready to come forth. Something new is about ready to be birthed, praise God. And then he went on to say, for no rhema from God is void of the power of fulfillment. No word from God is void of the power of fulfillment. No word from God is void of the power of fulfillment. God said, I'm going to make a way. I make a way where there seems to be no way. And you know what? This is the way it happens. You conceive it. You receive it. You believe it. And you bring forth the produce thereof. Praise God. And it's brought forth into your life. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. That's right. In the name of Jesus. How many of you women are ready to conceive tonight? <laughs> if there's any other way, <laughs> let this cup pass from me. I'm talking about conceiving and believing and receiving the new things of God, the breakthrough in your life, bringing forth something that's never been, coming into a condition and a state of being that you've never been in before. Hallelujah. John and Karen, you guys have been, you guys have been moving into a condition. And said, you know this in your spirit that the Lord is bringing about some new things in your life. You know that, don't you? You know that, don't you? And I know that. And I know that for every one of us, praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Are you ready? Are you ready? Ready or not. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. You know, one of, the, one of the things that happens if you won't embrace the new, you're going to have to stay back there in the, in the old. How many of you want to step into the new things of God? If you won't embrace the new, then you're going to have to stay 
in the old. And I'm going to tell you something. Conditions and states of being. So I don't know how to get out of this, Pastor Bob. I don't know how to get out of this poverty. I don't know how to get out of this oppression. I don't know how to get out of this depression. God is going to birth on the inside of you a way where there seems to be no way. You're going to conceive it. You're going to receive it and bring forth the produce thereof. Amen. Hallelujah. Did you notice that uh, this just came up out of my spirit because this is a word from the Lord. This is his word for you. It's his word for me. It's his word for the body of Christ. We're living in a critical time, in a critical hour. God's ready to bring change into your life, sister. He's ready to bring change into your life. He's bring change into your life. Brent, change. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Are you ready? Or ready or not? (laughs) Here he comes. Glory to God. I want you who are hungry and desirous and ready to embrace the new things of God. I want you to jump up out of your seats. Come on up here. I'd like our worship uh, uh, ministers to come on back up. I'd like the ministers that are here with me to come up and and pray together with us. Yep, pray with us. Pray with me. Come on, Tony and Mary. Come on up here. I want you to pray with us. Hallelujah. Pastor John and Karen, please come. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. New things. New things. New things. New things. New things. New things. Beloved, I'd like you just to lift your hearts and your hands up to the Lord. You know, I've discovered something. You don't have to receive anything from the Lord. But if you want what he has for you, then open your hearts to receive. I often think about that woman with the issue of blood. When she came to Jesus, she came to receive. I said she came to receive. And she said within herself, "But if I but touch his clothes, things are going to change in my life. Twelve years. But in this one moment, things are going to change in my life. You're special. You're special. Thank you, Lord. You're special. Hallelujah. Lift your hearts and your hands up to the Lord tonight. Pray this with me. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you are a great God. You are my God. You're my Father. You've created me. You've ordained my destiny. In your hand there's power. In your hand there is might. And in your hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all. Father, I thank you that you will do whatever it takes to bring me through, to bring down every wall, every barrier, every restriction, every restraint. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you tonight for a way, a way, a way through, a way in to greater glory, greater grace, change. Father, I thank you tonight in Jesus' name. As hands are laid on me tonight, Father, I receive your word. I believe your word. I conceive your word. And I thank you. I thank you. I thank you that everything that pertains to me is changing. Coming up higher. Coming up higher. Coming up higher. Going deeper. 
name. Hallelujah. Go ahead, you guys. Let's just lay hands on these folks. Thank you, Jesus. 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 You know he loves you. You know he loves you. You're special to him. You're special to him. The devil's lied to you, but you are special to the Lord. And he's bringing you up and bringing you out and bringing you through. Will you embrace that tonight? Will you receive that tonight? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Conceive it. Conceive it, brother. Conceive it. New, new, new. Jesus. 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 All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All things are passed away. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. 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 Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Oh, I just feel it. Break every chain. Every chain. Every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Take it, sister. Break every chain.
Glory. Can I share one quick thing with you? What you're going to discover as you walk out in the Lord, you're going to discover Him speaking to your heart and telling you and instructing you. It's important that you have faith and believe Him to step in. Because oftentimes, like the children of Israel, God already had a promised land for them. But they didn't have the courage to step into it. And I'm telling you, friends, sometimes it takes courage to step out and step into situations that are uncomfortable for you. You've never been in that. It seems like there's great opposition. Step in. Step in. Step in. And you'll see the walls come down. You'll see the chasms open. And you'll begin to see the way that God has made for you. Hallelujah. How many of you will do that? Praise God. You've got to launch out into the deep. You know, when you're out in that deep water there, you know, you're, you're not in control anymore. You're just going with the flow. Hallelujah. And may I also say how much I appreciate all of you I thank God for you. I thank God for His work that He's accomplishing in your lives. And I thank God for John and Karen Purcell, Mike and Monica, and this great church. You know, I have known John for a number of years now. He's much older than I am, but... But, you know, we had them, uh, they came, they've come up to our church in Oregon and ministered a few times. And uh, our, our people just love them, still talking about their ministry. And Laura and I love them. And I want you to recognize how tremendous a gift that God has placed here in this valley, this community. I love you, John. I love you, Karen. I love you, Mike. <laughs> Wake up, Mike. <laughs> like Otis. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're ready to come out of poverty? I said, are you ready to come out of poverty? Hallelujah. You, you may think uh, Raven's going to fly in. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. You never know what God's going to do, but... Generally speaking, God will give you and show you something, an action step, and as you follow it, as you follow it, you'll see the blessing of the Lord in your life. Love you. Hallelujah. How many got time for one more thing? You're not in that big of a hurry, are you? I'm glad. Um, I want the, the worship team to come up here. Come on, guys, drop your instruments down. Put them away. These guys represent the millennials. The wild millennials. Come on, just stand over here, guys. And, you know, I believe God's going to do something for the millennials. You know, you can turn around and face me, guys. Um, as an example, you know, I come from the, a little bit later than the 60s, but how, how many remember that was a, there was a rebellion in the 60s, but it was more peaceful, you know, well, sort of, but you know, today, the millennials, they're wild, you see them in the streets, you see them protesting, you see this, you see that. But I believe God, I call him the Lazarus generation. God's going to bring him forth. He's going to roll that stone away. There's going to be a move of God amongst the millennials. How many believe that's true? Amen. And uh, the, the worship thing. I love worship. How many know there's three types of music in Christianity? There's man to God. There's man to man about God. 
we call it contemporary Christian music or whatever. And then there's man to God with praise and worship. And how many know that's okay? It's important. It's good. Sacrifice of praise. But the highest form of music is God to man back to God. It's called spiritual psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Now, I was going to do this last night, but I just felt like I should do it tonight. Because these guys are going to go to a higher level than God now. I believe when they got one song, they'll get ten songs. I believe they'll be able to come into an area of tongues and interpretation in song. They'll, they'll come into a prophetic utterance in song. Worship songs given at the spur of the moment. These things, when they happen, bring the glory of God into the place. Because it's God manifesting himself. And this is what we need. We need a whole new generation of worshipers. So, Father, I just thank you for these young people. Thank you for bringing them in our path today. Oh, Use them for your glory. In Jesus' name. Whoa, catcher. I use them for your glory. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Touch many lives through their work. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Get them drunk. In Jesus' name. Oh. Oh. Slam, I get him slammed tonight. I love when young people get drunk. Get this one drunk too, Lord. <laughs> Come on, let's all praise the Lord just for a second. Stand up, give him one more praise. Come on, everybody. Everybody. Come on, let's praise him. Come on, let's praise him. Come on, let's praise him. Let's give him praise. Let's give him praise tonight. Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, glory to God. God's people ought to be the most joy-filled, happy people on earth. People shouldn't look at us and think we got baptized in pickle juice. Amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Michael mentioned when he, he found out he was sick. The weekend he found out, he was, he, the doctor told him on Friday something's wrong. We didn't find out what it was until Monday, after, Monday evening. That whole weekend, the devil was attacking my mind, you can imagine. But I was asking God about it too, and he was talking to me. But still, there was that pressure from the enemy. He was coming at me as hard as he could in my mind. I got up on Sunday morning, and I'd had to stand against all of that since Friday. And, the, the, and from a feeling perspective, the last thing I felt like doing was preaching. And I, I did one of these things that I don't ever do. I call it Bible roulette. You know what roulette is, you know, in the gambling? I just flopped my Bible down and I said, God, I made a stupid statement. We say stupid things when we're under pressure. I said, God, if anything happens in that church today, it's going to have to be you. As if it didn't ever have to be him, right? And I just opened my Bible, and it fell open to Isaiah 43, the scripture that Bob preached tonight. And the very verse he preached on t tonight that says, uh, forget about the past. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Will you not know it? It's beginning to flow forth now. The devil's telling me my son's life's over, pressuring me, and God's saying, no, things have just begun. 
What seems like the end many times is simply the beginning. It is the end of what the enemy's been doing. It is the end of maybe a season where God was using you in a certain way. And many times when we come up to the end of something, my cousin's business, they made $4 million one year. The, the, the housing bubble popped. They ended up being owed. Uh, they had people that owed them money that went bankrupt on them. They ended up not being able to buy lunch from four million one year to not be able to buy lunch. I was back there with them when this happened. And I, I felt sorry. You know, God helped them, helped them. And he spoke to me and he gave me that, that phrase. He said, tell them what looks like the end is simply the beginning. Won't go into the details except to tell you that God launched them into a new business. And within a year, they were making more money than they were making before the housing thing popped. And nobody in the area in Arkansas where they lived in Missouri was making money except them because with God all things are possible this afternoon I was waiting to come to church I was watching Christian TV and this pastor was ministering guess what scripture he was ministering on Isaiah 43 18 anybody ever hear of the law of double witness Paul said out of the mouth of two or three witnesses let it be established I know Bob heard from God. I know that that scripture was given to us through God or through Bob by God for us to take hold of. And if we'll believe it and go forward in it, the barriers are going to leave. The new doors are going to open and we're going to go into the new beginning God has for us. If we'll take what the word of the Lord, like Mary, be it unto me according to your word. When she said that to Gabriel, he split, man, because he knew she was impregnated with the word and her spirit, and it was going to be birth, birth forth. So whatever it means to you tonight, the law of double witness has come to you. Let it be established. Take hold of it. Begin to believe it. Praise God for it. When the devil lies to you, and he's going to, and tell you it's not working, you just start praising God and thanking him that it is, and you watch God give birth to the new beginning in your life, whatever area he needs to bring it forth. So let's just stand up and praise him one more time. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will not let the enemy <laughs> keep us back from what you have for us. Thank you for showing us. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for leading us. Thank you for anointing us. Thank you, Father. We receive let the word of God be impregnated in our spirit. And we thank you that it will be birthed forth into this earth to be a blessing to people. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Tomorrow morning at 9.30, we're going to do this all over again. And tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. So go home, get a good night's sleep, and uh, we'll look for you tomorrow. Amen?